Hello, welcome to Laser Cut Jigsaw Puzzle. My name is Ken from the Digital Services Department. To complete this tutorial, you will need to download a free software called Inkscape, which we will use to create our designs. After your design is complete, please email the file to digitalservices at balibrary.org. Also, feel free to email me with any questions you have regarding this tutorial. Here are some examples of what the completed jigsaw puzzle will look like. They will measure about 8 inches by 6 inches. Because the laser cutter just simply burns a design into the wood, you can see that this will not be a colorful puzzle. Your design will be black and white. But even with a lack of color, you can make some fun and interesting designs. After the puzzle is cut, all the pieces will be disconnected, so it's up to you to solve your own puzzle once you pick it up. First, let's download Inkscape. In a browser, go to inkscape.org, and then hover over the Download tab and click Current Version. If you have a Windows computer, click Windows, and then click 64-bit. If you have an older computer, you may need to download the 32-bit version. And if you have a Mac computer, simply just click this Mac OS button and the download will start instantly. And then just follow the rest of the prompts to complete the installation on your computer. Now let's create the outlines for our puzzle pieces. Go to puzzle.telegnom.org. This is a website for generating puzzle pieces. So let's start by adjusting the size. I'm going to type in 200 millimeters by 148 millimeters. This size is just slightly smaller than 8 inches by 6 inches. And then for tiles, I'm going to do a 10 by 8 puzzle. This will give me 80 pieces, and I think they look nice and square. I'm going to leave the jitter at 4% but feel free to move this slider around and see if you like the adjustments that it makes to your puzzle. And, you know, if you prefer a different shape, then absolutely go for it. Um, but I'm going to stick to 4% jitter. And then for tab size, I um, like to keep it between 15 and 20%. But again, you can adjust the slider just to see what you prefer. If you prefer bigger tabs, for your puzzle pieces or smaller tabs. It's really up to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and set mine to 18%. And then at the top, the seed is just the combination of lines that make up the puzzle. It is pretty random, so feel free to move the slider to come up with a different design and just make sure it's one that looks good to you. You can also type in a random number to get a new design. So once you like the outline of your puzzle, go ahead and click this button, Download SVG. And now that will be in your computer's downloads folder. Now let's open up Inkscape. When you get to this dialog box, just click New Document. And then go ahead and expand the window. So this is what Inkscape looks like by default. So let's first set up our document size. Go up to File, and then choose Document Properties. Let's change our display units to inches. And then also this units, we will have to change that to inches as well. Okay, so now uh, let's type in a width of 12 and then a height of 6. And again, it should be in inches. So now we've adjusted the size of our document, and you might not be able to see the whole thing. A quick way to do an auto zoom is to hit the 5 key on the keyboard. And then we see the whole document in the frame. Next, let's go ahead and import our puzzle outline. Go up to File, 
and choose import. And then in your downloads folder, it will be called jigsaw.svg. Click open and then click OK. All right, so now we see that our puzzle outline is imported. If you want to zoom in to see it better, then tap the plus key on the keyboard. If you want to zoom out, hit the minus key on the keyboard. And also, you can scroll left to right or up and down with the bars on the sides. Before we get started with your design, I just want to show you an example of the design that I have already made. So when you are designing your puzzle, just keep in mind that there may be a couple blank pieces with nothing on them. And so my goal is to limit the amount of blank pieces because the more blank pieces with no etching it, it's going to be a lot harder to solve the puzzle later. So, for example, with these clouds over here, I aligned them just so, you know, enough of the line is in each puzzle piece over here. So these clouds aren't that close together for, you know, for a reason. Because if I put the clouds super close together, then there would be more blank pieces at the bottom. So... The design is totally up to you, but I just want to give you a heads up that if you don't put images on every piece, then it's going to be harder to solve later on. And so basically what I did is I brought several images into the puzzle and I just aligned them however I wanted. So this bridge is a separate piece, the birds are a separate piece, and the sun is separate and then all these clouds are just individual pieces. So the alignment of your pictures is important. Okay so now back to our blank design here. One thing that I like to do is change these lines to red just to distinguish it from the black and white pictures that I'm going to import. So to change the color just choose the outline here and then right click on red and then click set stroke and then that will change it to a red color. It's pretty subtle but I just prefer to do it that way. Now let's get images to fill up this design. So now I'm going to search the internet for images to use. Because we want our images to be one solid color I like to include the term silhouette in my search. So if I want to search for a cardinal bird, I will type cardinal silhouette and then we'll see all of these images that are solid colors. If it's red, that's okay. We can convert it inside of Inkscape. Also, I like to include the word free at the end of my search just so that images with watermarks don't show up and so I can avoid copyright issues. So I'm going to click on this image because I like it and then I'm going to right click and click save image as and then I'm going to save it to my downloads folder. Now back in Inkscape go ahead and click file and import and then in your downloads folder choose the image that you just saved click open and then OK. Now we have to convert this image file to a vector format. So how to do that is go up to path and then choose trace bitmap. And I'm going to click update over here. And so now we see a preview of what the image will look like. If the image is not dark enough, then you can increase the brightness threshold and then click update. So you can play around with the brightness threshold if the image doesn't look how it's supposed to over here. When it does look how you want it, then click apply. In this case, it's pretty obvious which image we want to delete. We want to delete the original here. If your original picture was black, then an easy way to tell which one to delete is just 
hover your image over the side here. And the image we want to keep is the one that um, this outline is going to pass through. You can see this gray outline going through here. The JPEG or PNG image, the line won't pass through the background. So we want to delete that one. So after you've done the trace bitmap, you can place it on your puzzle exactly where you want it. You can resize the image. All you need to do is hold down the control key on your keyboard and then click and drag one of these corner arrows upward to increase the size. If you want to rotate your image, then go ahead and click a second time on the image and then the arrows will turn to rotation arrows. You can do a free rotation or if you want, hold down control and then it can snap to 15 degree increments. Another thing you can do is you can add text to your puzzle. Go ahead and click the letter A, that's the text tool and then click on top of the puzzle here and then you can type your text and then click this box in the upper left and then you can scroll through the fonts by hitting the up and down arrow and also you can change the font size and just be aware of the placement of all of your images and text so that most of the puzzle pieces are covered by something. So just repeat this process until your puzzle is all full and then the last thing we want to do before we save it is we need to adjust the stroke style of the puzzle pieces. So after your puzzle is complete, just click on one of the lines of the puzzle so that it will highlight like that. And now we want to go up to Object and then click Fill and Stroke. And then under the Fill and Stroke menu, choose Stroke Style. And then change the width to inches. And then you'll see right now it's 0 0.004 inches. We want to change that to 0 0.001 inches and then hit enter on the keyboard. And you'll also notice the lines just became more faint. So changing it to 0 0.001 inches, that tells the laser cutter to cut through the wood rather than just etching on top of the wood. So this is a very important step. So just to check that the width is correct, go ahead and select the puzzle pieces and then in stroke style, just make sure it's 0 0.001 inches. My puzzle's ready to be saved. So I'm going to go up to file and choose save as, and then choose a folder like desktop or documents so that you can save this file. Save it as your first name and last name and also save it as a PDF document. Just click this drop down menu and choose PDF and then click save. And then the final step is to attach that PDF to an email to digitalservices at balibrary.org. Thank you for completing this tutorial. I look forward to seeing your designs. Take care.